Hello, welcome back to PA Academy. So we are still looking at super mesh, and this is example three. Now, in this example three, we have the circuit, and we are asked to look for I1, I2, and I3. So if you have been following this video under super mesh, uh, you see that this example is similar to it looks similar to the one we looked at in example two. But there's a little there's a little tweak here. So I want you to pause this video and attempt it, and let me know. And once you are finish attempting it just keep your answer and then you let us do it together and let me know if we arrive at the same answer so i want you to pause this video and try to attempt it based on the knowledge you have have so far on the previous examples that we've looked at all right so without wasting time but let me start with my own solution i hope you've also completed yours and you've already gotten your answer for your i1 i2 and i3 so just do that just to test your knowledge on what we've looked at so far so now to start with like I said, we are going to write out the equation of our current source. So since we are dealing with super mesh, so equation of current source. I hope you can see that. Okay, so equation of current source. In drawing that, you can see that, unlike in the other examples, it's looking um like this horizontal. So, but now we are having it to be vertical. So let me just draw that. So we are having something like this now. And we are giving it to be five amperes. All right. So there are two current um, current in that direction. We have like this. That is I one, and then we also have in opposite direction. That is I three. And don't forget, I said when you had to write the equation of the current source, you look at the one that is in the same direction with the given uh, current source. So which is I one. So that means you are going to be having I one minus I three equals to what, 5 amperes and this is our equation 1 so this is always very very easy to, to deduce you can just get it very easily so now we've done that now let's go ahead and draw the super main circuit all right so this is where the you know there's a little difference compared to the other example that we looked at earlier so in drawing that you are going to be having something like this okay So don't forget, we are going to be look, joining the mesh that uh, that is sharing this uh, current, that have this um, this current in between them. So we are going to be having something like this. Okay. And don't forget, I, I, like I said in the other example, if you have other in, uh, elements in that branch where we are having the current that is being shared between two meshes, you are going to omit everything together. So we are not going to be adding this 2 ohm resistor in this uh, super mesh circuit. So this is how it's going to look like. So let's go ahead and add the values. So here is, um, this resistor is three, three, um, 3 ohms. This is 1 ohm. And then this is, um, this is also 1 ohm. And then we have a voltage source of 10 volts. I think those are the three elements we are having there. So let's go ahead and add the polarities based on. Okay, so there's one thing we didn't do here. I didn't have the polarities here. So let me just go ahead and add it. So for the voltage source, this is plus, this is minus. So based on the direction of the current for I1, this is going to be plus, minus. I want to believe this is should be very simple by now. I should have gotten out to do this. So if you have watched the video on that mesh and now super mesh. So this is going to be plus and minus. So for I3, this will be plus, minus. So this will be plus, minus. So just in the direction that you have chosen, this will be plus, minus. This will be plus, minus, plus, minus. And then due to I3 in this 3 ohm resistor, this is plus and minus. So they are going to be having the same polarities here. So let's start from this 1 ohm resistor. So this is going to be plus and minus. And the current that is flowing through it is i3 like we are having here so in this 3 ohm resistor we have two current flowing through which is i2 and i3 so this is going to be plus and minus and the current in that direction is i3 why this will be plus and minus and the current in this direction is i2 why for this in this downward direction we have the current here to be i1 so that's plus minus why on this side is plus minus due to the current in upward direction 
which is I2. So I hope everything there is clear and is not um, too choke, choked up or jam packed. Alright, so let's continue. So, having done that, let's apply KVL to what we're having here. So, let's just take it from this point and then we go around and come back to this. So, let's apply KVL. Apply KVL. So, once we start from here, going upward. So, this is plus and minus the polarity of the voltage source. So from minus to plus, that's going to be 10. So the 10 will be there. So that will be 10. So the first element will come across is this 1 ohm resistor. So from plus, plus to minus due to the 1 ohm resistor. So that's going to be minus 1 I1. Also we have from minus to plus, from negative to positive due to I2. So we are going to be having minus 1 I2 so we are done with the 1 ohm resistor this 1 ohm resistor so let's continue we come here to the 3 ohm resistor so we are having from positive to negative due to I3 on this 3 ohm resistor so we are going to be having minus 3 I3 so from also from negative to positive due to the current I2 so we are going to be having plus 3 I2 that is done for here and then once we get here from positive to negative, so that's going to be minus 1. And don't forget this is 1 ohm resistor. So that's minus 1 I3. So we have only one current flowing through it. So this is the only thing we are going to be having here. And equals to what? Equals to 0. So now let's simplify this. So I like to pick the, arrange them accordingly. So I1, we only have um, 1 I1. That is minus 1. Is that, am I correct? Alright, so we have only one value for I1, so that's going to be minus, minus 1 I1, the same stats, minus I1. And then for I2, let's see, we have minus 1 and then plus 3. For I2. Okay, so at this point here, this is supposed to be plus, so you have to be careful of this, this is plus. This is minus 1 I1 plus 1 I2. That's because of this 1 ohm resistor. This is from positive to negative. That's why we're having minus 1 I2. And you're also having from negative to positive due to I2. So this is supposed to be positive, not negative. So with that, our I2 is, we're having plus 1 I2 and then plus 3 I2. That will give us plus 4. Plus 4 I2. And then for the I3, we are having minus 3 I3 and minus 1 I3. That will give us minus 4 I3 equals to so we're having 10 if we bring 10 to the other side of the equals to sign it becomes minus 10 and this is our what equation 2 so now we've gotten our equation 1 we've gotten our equation 2 so let's go ahead and solve the um the third mesh that is this let's call this mesh 2 because we're having current 2 there so let's call this mesh 2 so let's go ahead and apply kvl also to mesh 2 now we've been able to simplify the circuit that is the super mesh itself where it is having a current source between two of them between the two meshes so now let's go ahead and do so let me just draw a line here okay the black markers are yet to come up so let me just so that you don't mix everything up so let's use this space to apply kvl to this mesh too so we are going to be having apply kvl that's catch up voltage law to mesh 2. So, this is what we're taking to be mesh 2. So, we are going to go around this particular mesh. So, let's say um, from here, we go around it in a clockwise manner. So, that means we, here, here, and then we come back here. So, from here, if you go here, the first uh, element you are coming across is this 2, two ohm resistor. So, from positive to negative, so that's going to be minus 2. And then the current there is I2. So when we leave there, we come to the 3 ohm resistor. So from positive to negative, due to current I2, that's going to be minus 3 I2. While from negative to positive, due to current I3, so that's going to be plus 3 I3. Now let's come to the 1 ohm resistor. From positive to negative, so that's going to be minus 1 I2. The current at that point is I2. While from negative to positive, Due to current I1, so that will be plus 1 
i1 equals to 0. So let's rearrange and simplify this. So i1, i1. So this is the only i1 we're having here. So that's 1 i1. So what about i2? So this is minus 2 i2 minus 3. That's minus 5. And that's minus 6. So that's minus 6 i2. Then for i3, we are having only just plus 3 i3 equals to 0. Alright, so that is it. This is our equation 3 and equation 3. So now we can go ahead and solve equation 1, equation 1, 2 and 3 simultaneously and that will give us our answer for uh, the value of current i1, i2 and i3. So let's do that. So let me just write out the, the equations. So for i1, this is going to be, you can write this as 1i1. So we don't have i2 here, we can just give it either plus or minus 0i2 because it will still be 0. And then minus 1i3 equals to 5. And then from equation 2, we are having minus 1i1. So minus i1 and minus 1i1, we are still saying the same thing. Plus 4i2 minus 4i3 equals to minus 10. For equation 3, we are having it to be 1i1 minus 6i2 plus 3i3 equals to 0. So if you should solve these three equations simultaneously, you are going to get i1, i2, and i3. So if you should do that, whichever method you want to use, maybe like the calculator method I was using earlier, using your calculator, whichever one you want to do, you are going to get your i1 to be what? 8.571 I ampere. 8.571 amperes and then you are going to be getting your i2 to be 3.214 3.214 amperes and then your i3 will be 3.571 3.571 amperes so these are the um the value of i1 i2 and i3 as the current flowing in each of those meshes based on the the i mean direction we've chosen and this is to tell say that since all the answers you are getting are positive uh, let me see in the next examples we are going to be looking at all right so this is to tell us that all the direction that we assumed for this particular circuit all the clockwise direction that means all the currents are flowing in that direction so that's to tell us that the direction we picked is in line with with the assumed direction is actually the, uh, the real direction that's why we are having the current to be positive i want to believe you understand what i'm saying if you've watched the video under mesh analysis you get what i'm saying all right so this is it for example three and in example four we are going to be dealing with looking at a circuit with four with four meshes if you look at the previous examples we've been looking at we are most of them are just two i mean three rather so we are going to be looking at a circuit with four so if that interests you make sure you don't mix example four example four so and also if you solve this question before I actually started solving it, like maybe to test your knowledge and we arrive at the same answer, do let me know in the comment section below. And if you got a different answer, so just go through it and let me know where you got the mistake, where you got it all wrong, and then let's talk on the comment, on the, on the, in the comment section below. All right, so thank you very much uh, for watching. This is still PA Academy. If you find value, please give it a thumbs up. If you are yet to subscribe, please subscribe to this channel. Also check out our website, paacademy.co, paacademy.co. Academy. Co. All right, so thank you very much, and I'll see you all in example four.